Hello, my name is Michelle Kimpton, and I am the Chief Executive Officer of DuraSpace, as well as the Project Director for DuraCloud. I'm here the, today to talk to you about the features and functionality of the managed service DuraCloud, which has been de developed by the DuraSpace organization. DuraCloud is also an open source platform, which is available for any organization to download and implement. Before we get into the features and functionality of DuraCloud, I would like to tell you a little bit if you're not familiar with the DuraSpace organization. DuraSpace is a not-for-profit organization that provides guidance and support to the open source projects DSpace and Fedora. Together, these two open source projects support a community of a thousand organizations using DSpace and Fedora for managing and preserving their digital uh, content, which could be research output, books, video, and other content which makes up part of the scholarly record. We work primarily with the academic community to provide open source tools, technologies, and services for providing long-term and persistent access to digital content. Two years ago, when we were looking at what are some of the ways that we can assist our community in providing additional tools and services for managing and persisting content and stewarding content for future generations, we began to examine cloud technologies as part of a solution for providing long-term and persistent access to content, and in particular to take advantage of cloud technologies for addressing some of the needs around preservation. Why the cloud was attractive was that it is developing as infrastructure, which is all available over the internet at massive scale, whether it be compute or storage, and also you can provision it as a service, which means you could pay for what you use and not pay for what you don't need, and you don't have to provision it up front like you may have to do with other capital expenditures, which would include hardware as well as data centers uh, and potentially other IT infrastructure to support those types of efforts. So two years ago we began the DuraCloud project and the purpose of the project was to see if we could develop a platform, an open source platform based on cloud infrastructure, meaning taking advantage of compute and storage um, on cloud-based technology to provide our users with a way to digitally archive their content and, pr and put multiple copies of that content in multiple locations uh, under multiple administrations and then once it was in the cloud to potentially run other types of services on that content that might be attractive to our community. And those other services could be preservation services, they could be media um, video services, they could be data mining services, but to at least put the platform in place that would enable the deployment of those such services. So over the course of the two years, there were 11 releases of the open source software. We are currently at the 1.1 release and the public launch of the service uh, is November 1st. We had two pilot programs uh, during the course of the two years. The first pilot program was with New York Public Library, the Biodiversity Heritage Library, and WGBH uh, to look at large-scale content transfer and content management in the cloud. The second pilot, the second phase of the pilot program, we worked with 13 academic partners that primarily had DSpace and Fedora repositories installed and looked at what would it take to move content between those repositories into DuraCloud and provide a service layer uh, that would allow digital archiving and preservation services to be easily uh, implemented. 
our phase two pilot partners are the folks on this list. Uh, so you can see many uh, different universities, um, all in the U.S. for the sake of this pilot. And really, as I mentioned, focused on uh, preservation services for the most part. So what exactly is StoreCloud? As I mentioned, it's an open source platform and a managed service based on cloud infrastructure for providing preservation support and access. And one of the key values of DuraCloud is you upload content from your either repository or another content management system. You upload it into DuraCloud and then DuraCloud uh, enables you to push copies of that content to multiple cloud providers all through one common, uh, simple user interface. DuraCloud also lets you view that content, download that content, and run services on that content once it's in the DuraCloud platform, and that you can make that content accessible um, because it's all uh, web-enabled and all your content items would have uh, URLs associated with them. Um, you can make it accessible uh, over the internet if you wish to do so. At a very high level, how does Dura Cloud work? Your organization's content is residing in uh, your local store. You then transfer that content over an HTTPS connection, uh, a secured internet connection, into your Dura Cloud, your Dura Cloud server, which is actually a virtual server, but it is. Um, the DuraCloud server is unique to your organization. You transfer that content uh, with um, using a web web based user interface or using a um, client side tool or you can even use programmatic uh, interfaces to move your content over. Once you push your content into DuraCloud, uh, the primary copy of your content would be managed in Amazon S3 you can then make an additional copy of your content in Rackspace. Um, and we're currently uh, looking at integrating Azure, as well as most recently, San Diego Supercomputer. So through the DuraCloud um, application, you can not only have a copy in a primary store, but you can have copies in these secondary stores, stores and then you can synchronize uh, your copies across those multiple stores all through the DuraCloud application. So some of the key features of DuraCloud is that it's very simple to use. Um, you do not have to be a developer to use it. You don't have to really have any technical skills. Um, it's very simple and it's all accessible via a web-based user interface. The service is a hosted managed service, so you don't need any client software. Um, you access everything over the internet. Uh, it's a fully managed service solution, so we do all the work in the background to make sure that you've got one interface to all these cloud providers. You don't have to do any additional work. Uh, and it's turnkey in that preservation support and other services are built into the platform. Uh, so that you can easily run those services on your content if you choose. Some of the applications and services currently available in the DuraCloud platform, uh, they're really focused in two areas, archiving and preservation and multimedia access. And there's many more on the roadmap, but these are what is, are available today, which uh, be it um, October 2011. So, on the archiving preservation, um, as I mentioned, you can back up your content and then you can synchronize it across multiple cloud stores. There is uh, Droid is enabled as a file format identification uh, service and that runs automatically as you ingest content. You can check the health of your files across uh, the cloud stores as well as compare it to what's stored locally so that you know your content hasn't changed over time. And you can make copies of your content on demand from a primary storage uh, provider into a secondary storage provider uh, if you choose to do so after um, you've enabled your DuraCloud application. In terms of multimedia access, there is we have a Jatoka image viewer which is enabled in DuraCloud so you can do more 
sophisticated viewing of JPEG 2000 images. You can stream video uh, through your DuraCloud application. Um, and you can do some uh, lightweight uh, transformation of images. In other words, going from a TIFF file format to a JPEG file format. Currently, uh, DuraCloud is integrated with the DSpace and Fedora Commons uh, applications, and what this means is, f is that there are tools <coughs> and um, programmatic um, interfaces that connect these two platforms so that you can, for example, manage your DSpace content uh, in DuraCloud, but all through your DSpace administrative interface. We have several other integrations in the work. Uh, Open Journal Systems and Islandora are uh, two on the immediate roadmap. So the key uh, preservation and archiving use case that many of our pilot partners were testing was the ability to retrieve lost files or damaged files or do a partial, partial or full disaster recovery. So in the case of DSpace, um, in DSpace, you would create an AIP package, that's an archival information package, and that package would then be backed up um, in a zip file to your DuraCloud account. Then from your DSpace administrative interface, if you want to replace a file or if you lose a file, you can automatically recall that file back from your DuraCloud instance and it will be replaced. You also can run uh, health checks and monitoring uh, from the DSpace interface, and basically that will make calls into DuraCloud to do what you're asking uh, with content that's stored in DuraCloud. So it's a nice end-to-end -end solution for running preservation services and having multiple copies of your DSpace content um, across the cloud providers, but not having to go to two separate applications, be it the DSpace application and the DuraCloud application. You can actually run all of those processes through the DSpace um, interface. And that is available um, through the DSpace uh, 1.8 software. So what are some of the t key ways in which DuraCloud might be able to help your organization? Um, it's really the ability to address some of the preservation strategies that you might want to enable um, for your digital content that you're stewarding. So what it allows you to do is move easily move uh, online copies off-site and distribute them geographically. So multiple copies of content and multiple geographies under multiple administrations helps keep your content safe. DuraCloud does that very simply through one user interface without any programming really required. You can easily check the health of those remote online copies. You can replace those copies. You can uh, easily, um, if they get lost, if the, if the primary site, the copies get lost, you can replace them with the copies you have in the cloud. You can scale your storage up or down as needed. You don't have to provision it up front. You can view all your content, uh, upload it, download it, edit it, delete it uh, through the web-based Dura Cloud interface. Uh, you also have the added ability to stream video files and embed them in, lo in your local application. And you can provide access to any of the content through a simple HTTP link if you so desire. When we did the pilot program, uh, these were some of the key uh, comments that came back from our pilot partners as to the real value proposition of, of DuraCloud, the managed service. And it really all comes from the ease of use, um, of using the service as well as taking away and abstracting away the different um, the different complexities of integrating with multiple cloud providers. So you get the benefits of the diverse network of storage locations but without the overhead of managing the different vendors. And bridging that complex gap 
between cloud-based services and what um, organizations and users have experience in. The pricing, there is a subscription fee and that goes to the Duraspace organization for managing the service on your behalf, providing you with the software upgrades <coughs> and some level of technical and customer support. The uh, type of service plan, you get either 500 gigabytes up to one terabyte of data included in that. And um, additional storage, which is available um, with a professional plan, costs a dollar per gigabyte per year. And that, uh, that storage figure is, is basically what's passed on or is it really a trans is a transfer cost from the cloud providers that we're using? What does the subscription fee cover? Um, management and servicing of the Dora Cloud software, your own hosted instance of Dora Cloud. As I mentioned, uh, a virtual server is spun up in the cloud <clears throat> to run the Dora Cloud application, and that server is not shared with any other institutions running Dora Cloud. That is your Dura Cloud server and is only accessed by you. Complementary upgrades to the software, so we upgrade the software every eight weeks and those come without any cost uh, to you, additional cost. There's a single web console provided for all your account management. You receive one annual or monthly invoice from DuraSpace depending on what you choose, um, which has aggregated all of the cloud storage uh, costs that you have utilized if there are any additional costs outside of the subscription and the basic customer and technical support you might require to get up and going with Dora Cloud. Some of the reasons that you might choose to use Dora Cloud as, a, as opposed to going directly to, the, to a single cloud vendor is the opportunity to take advantage of, of multiple cloud vendors through one integrated management console the ability to do health checks on your files, which you can't do easily um, from Amazon directly or Rackspace directly. Uh, the ability to copy content and keep that content synchronized across multiple cloud providers. Um, and then access to the other services, such as the image viewing and the image transformation. And of course, um, as I mentioned, all the software is open source and it's a community share platform which means that there's a lot of opportunity for continued development um, of the platform and the ability for any organization to download and use it um, and not have to use the managed service if they choose. We have several uh, things on the roadmap. The platform is in continuous development and we um, continue to expand our community of users that we hope to get contributions from. Uh, some of the things on the immediate roadmap are improved video handling, uh, integrated search capability, improved file validation tools, uh, so not just file identification but file validation, and having DSpace available as a service application within the, uh, the cloud environment as well. Storage providers that we're looking at are um, UCSD, Azure, and also making sure that a local e eucalyptus integration is possible as well, so that that would enable folks to easily integrate um, with local storage if they had a eucalyptus adapter in place. As I mentioned, the platform is open source, so it's available for organizations to run locally. Um, in order to do that, it needs to sit on some type of cloud infrastructure, whether that be commercial or private. Um, it is being tested by a few organizations now, um, but we're looking for organizations that really want, want to enable their software as part of our DuraCloud platform. And so if there, you have open source software and you would like to try and run it in the DuraCloud platform, um, we are interested in, in working with you to, to see if that works. For more details on the open source project, uh, please visit our wiki. We are currently uh, giving out free, 
free DuraCloud trial accounts. This is a 30 day trial where you can store a couple hundred gigabytes of content and test out the services in DuraCloud. Um, you can go to our website and click the Try It link. Um, you'll then be provided with a form to fill out, and then Carissa, our partner specialist, will contact you with the details of getting a trial account. And if you'd like to find out more um, about DuraCloud, I recommend starting at the DuraCloud.org site um, and going to the Find Out More link or watching the video and then uh, doing a trial account as well. So I want to thank uh, everyone for listening today and uh, I'm going to pass it on to Krissa who will give you, be giving you a live, uh, who will be giving you a demonstration of the DuraCloud uh, platform and managed service. Great. Well, welcome everyone and thank you again for participating in today's webinar. As Michelle mentioned, uh, my name is Carissa Smith and I'm the Partner Specialist working primarily uh, on DuraCloud. So the first step of the live demonstration is explaining how you would go about getting your DuraCloud personal user profile. And to do that, you would go to the DuraCloud Management Console, which is located at manage.duracloud.org. And the Management Console um, is a separate web application that allows you to manage not only your personal user profile, but also your DuraCloud in instance, which if you become a customer of DuraCloud and have, have the, um, a customer of the managed service, you would have your own individual DuraCloud instance running that you would then be able to manage. So this is what you would do uh, via the management console. So to create a profile, um, you would simply go to the middle of the screen and click create new profile. I won't walk you through that tedious process, um, but I will log into the management console and show you what you would see uh, if you were a customer of the managed service. So the first thing that you're presented with is information about your individual DuraCloud instance that's running. Um, in particular, you can see the host name on the left-hand side of the screen. Uh, in this case, I uh, have access to and will be using the demo.duracloud.org instance today, but um, assuming you are a customer, it would be uh, your institution name.duracloud.org. Um, Moving to the right-hand side of the screen, uh, the Launch DuraCloud Administrator button will take you directly into your DuraCloud instance, so you can add content, run services, etc., and that's the heart of the demo today, but I wanted to go over this management console first. Uh, again, moving again to the right of the screen, you can see the version of the DuraCloud software that your instance is running, and also the status. Obviously, the instance is running. Um, as an administrator, you have the option to stop, start, and also upgrade your DuraCloud instance. So when DuraCloud releases new versions of the software, as we will next week, you will have the control of when you upgrade your DuraCloud instance to the new software. We will make it immediately available to all of our customers. And the last thing I wanted to demonstrate today in the Management Console is how you would add um, or give permissions to other users to be able to access your DuraCloud instance add content, run services, etc. So to do that, you would simply click on the Manage Users and Roles button that I'm highlighting in the right-hand side of the screen. And while my screen catches up, um, you'll be presented with first a list of active users. And from the list, these are the people that have access to that demo DuraCloud instance. They have the permission to log in to my, to my demo instance and add content, run services, etc. But how did they get to be active users? Let me move down the screen for just a moment. Um, the Management Console uses a, um, an invite process. So to add users to your DuraCloud account, you would simply insert the email address for the user, click Invite. The Management Console will automatically generate a unique URL and an, an invitation form that would then be sent to that user. They would click on the URL within the invitation email that they received follow the directions, and then that information would then pop up into the active users area. So you would then um, be able to control what type of access they had in their DuraCloud instance uh, in terms of what role they served, as well as you could be able to remove them from the account uh, down the line if you no longer wanted them to have access to your DuraCloud instance. So it's really just as simple as sending out an invite to add users to your DuraCloud account. Um, and then clicking remove if you no longer wanted them to have access. So moving back to the main screen of the Management Console and moving into the meat of the demo, um, I'm going to click Launch DuraCloud Administrator and that will take me directly to my DuraCloud instance. 
Now you can certainly uh, type demo.duracloud.org into a URL and bypass the management console uh, completely if you so choose. That's another option. Um, but using the management console and clicking that button will automatically log you in. And what you see in front of you right now is what we call the DuraCloud Administrator interface or Dura Admin. This is the web application that sits on top of your content, regardless of what storage providers you've chosen to use with DuraCloud, as well as the interface that allows you to run services on top of your content. So it's the web interface for your DuraCloud instance, and it's your individual DuraCloud instance. So moving on to the left-hand side of the screen, um, we have tabbed navigation. So we have four tabs that you can see, and I'll highlight those in sequence. We have the Dashboard, Spaces, Services, and Administration tab. I'm going to start with the Spaces tab because, in my view, it's one of the most important tabs. Um, if you have content stored in your DuraCloud account, it'll automatically open up the Spaces tab. And, and what do I mean exactly by Spaces? What, what is that word? Uh, in DuraCloud Speak, Spaces is analogous to a folder or a container of some variety. Essentially, a DuraCloud space uh, holds the content that you've stored in DuraCloud. And you can see the entire list of spaces here on the left-hand side of my screen in the Spaces column. Um, a note about the orientation of the screen. Uh, on the left-hand side are the spaces, and as you move uh, to the right of your screen in each of the, the subsequent panels, you get um, deeper and deeper. Uh, more information about a particular item. So essentially you drill down from left to right and get more information as you go. Uh, moving back up for a moment, under the Spaces tab you can see the Amazon Web Services logo. And then moving directly to the right of that, you can see that the provider selected is Amazon S3. And what that means is that you're viewing content that's currently stored within Amazon, uh, the Amazon's commercial cloud, commercial cloud store. However, uh, with this DuraCloud instance, we also have Rackspace available. So to change what provider and the content you're viewing, you'd simply choose it from the drop-down on the right-hand side of your screen. And as I do that and let the screen load, I'll pause for a moment. Moving back on the left-hand side of your screen underneath the Spaces tab, you can see that the, the logo changed to the Rackspace cloud. And you can see that your provider on the right-hand side of the screen is now Rackspace. And also, you may have noticed that indeed my spaces list is much smaller than it was before. And uh, for the purposes of this demo, I've made my two storage areas uh, different. So within DuraCloud, you can choose to store um, copies of your content and keep them synchronized between both Amazon and Rackspace if you so choose. We have services that will synchronize between the two different commercial cloud storage providers. Or you can also choose to store a subset of your content in Rackspace as a secondary store. Have all of your content in the primary store and then choose to store a subset within Rackspace if you so choose. Um, we leave it up to whatever use case you're trying to to best meet uh, with DuraCloud. So moving back to the Amazon storage area um, and drilling down a little bit further, I'm going to click on one of these spaces to select it. And you know a space is selected when it has a dark gray background behind it. The center panel then becomes a list of the content items that are stored within that space. And um, as I mentioned before, the orientation of getting more detail, the rightmost panel becomes the space detail area. And within that, you can see a couple different um, pieces of information about a DuraCloud space. In this particular instance, you can see my Carissa Uploads folder has been selected. Um, it's an open space versus closed, and you have the option to change that uh, within this area. And open and closed uh, relates to what Michelle was talking about earlier in terms of URL access, HTTP access to content items. If a space is open, all the content items that are held within it, so all four items here, would be available via HTTP. A person could access them very easily if they had the URL. If this space was closed, however, the content items that are, are held within the space that I'm highlighting now would not be available by HTTP. If a, if a person was able to find a link to this Chapter 12 MP3, um, they would be presented with a DuraCloud login screen. So that's, that's again, if you have a closed space, the content items that are held within it are then essentially password protected and no longer available. So moving down in the Space Details panel on the right-hand side of your screen, you can add a content item via the Add Content Item button or delete the space entirely. Um, there's some metadata we have 
uh, view viewable here about the space in terms of the amount of content content items that are stored in the space when the space was created and you can also add metadata and tags at a space level you can add as many as you'd like um, moving over to the content items now uh, to select a content item again it's as simple as clicking on that content item and the space detail column now becomes the content detail on the right hand side of your screen and the the layout is very similar you are presented with the name of the content item right under the content detail um, heading. One thing I wanted to note, um, if you hover over that janeaustin.jpg um, image, you can see that that is indeed a link, and that is the publicly available URL for that content item. So this is true for any content item. You can always find the publicly available URL uh, by hovering over, <clears throat> hovering over the name of that content item. Moving down, you can edit, download, view, delete the content item if you so choose. And then further down the screen, you can see there's a nice little preview panel, which right now uh, you get a, just a, <laughs> a silly little mountain clip art image. But if we had the image server service running, which I'll explain a little bit more in detail later, you would see an actual preview of this, of the uh, Jane Austen uh, JPEG that I have added to this content area. So again, the reason why you don't see that right now is because I don't have the service running to do so. Moving down again, you can see details about this individual content item, the space where it's currently located, its size, um, its modified date, either the last time it was changed or the date it was added, as well as the checksum value. And I wanted to pause for a moment to explain, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, a checksum is analogous to DNA or a fingerprint. It's an individual identifying piece of information for each individual content item. And this checksum value is calculated by DuraCloud as soon as you transfer that content item into DuraCloud. And then it's stored with that, uh, as metadata with that content item uh, for the length of its existence in DuraCloud. And this is important for our health checkup services, which I'll explain uh, in just a moment. So moving down again, you can add metadata and tags on a content item. Uh, level basis as well, as many as you'd like. Um, I mentioned before, and this is also true in the center panel, you can add a content item. Um, let me just bring up the, the navigation for that. If you choose add content item, it's a file by file transfer or upload. Uh, you can simply enter the item ID and MIME type and then choose uh, the, the file on your local machine that you'd like to upload. If you have a lot of content that you'd like to transfer to DuraCloud, uh, we have two other options available. For, uh, for developers uh, in the group listening today, we have uh, the fully documented DuraCloud REST API so that you can write programmatic scripts to upload uh, content to DuraCloud and you can also interface at a programmatic level. And then for those people who aren't so uh, developer-like, uh, like myself, uh, we have something known as the synchronization utility, which allows you to do one, uh, a couple things depending on your use case. You can use the synchronization tool as a one-off bulk upload. And uh, this utility is a command line tool that you would run on your local machine. Point it to local uh, folder or directory of local content that it would then transfer to your DuraCloud instance. Or if you so choose, if you have a local directory that you'd like to keep essentially mirrored in DuraCloud or consistently synchronized in DuraCloud, you could keep the synchronization tool running um, and it would automatically propagate uh, changes to your local directory to DuraCloud as well. As I mentioned, uh, creating essentially a mirror or a secondary copy in the cloud. So again, you could use the sync tool in two ways, um, keeping a mirrored copy if you'd like, or as a one-off batch upload uh, utility. It has the capability to do either of those. So moving out of the spaces area and over to the services, and I'll wait a moment while this loads so I don't get ahead of myself. The first thing you'll notice here on the left-hand panel of the screen are the currently deployed services, and by deployed I mean they're currently running. Um, the Bit Integrity Checker service under the list has, uh, has was recently run, hence the reason it is in the deployed state. Um, if you go over on the right-hand side of your screen, similar to the spaces area, you'll see the detail panel. In this case, it's the detail for the Bit Integrity Checker service that's running. And you can see directly under that, you can undeploy the service if you'd like. And then below that are all the details about the configuration information for this service. To see the entire list of available services that are not deployed at this moment, but you could certainly deploy if you choose, 
Uh, click on the Available Services button in the center of your screen. And again, I'll wait a moment while my screen capture catches up. So after you click the Available Services button, you'll get an enti the entire list of DuraCloud services available. Um, I'm going to go through and explain each of them quickly. Uh, the Bit Integrity and Checker services, both the regular and the bulk, um, as Michelle was explaining uh, earlier, allow you to check the health of your content that's stored in DuraCloud. And from a more basic level, what, do, what this service does is it will pull the stored checksum value that I mentioned is stored with the content item when it's transferred into DuraCloud the first time. And it will also recalculate the checksum value and then compare the stored versus the newly calculated checksum. And then the service itself will print out a report and tell you whether those checksum values matched or whether there's been a mismatch um, that the service has found. And then you can uh, determine whether that file needs to be replaced or, um, or not. Um, again, and this will really help you check the health of your content to determine if individual content items have experienced some sort of bit rot or integrity loss. The difference between the regular and the bulk tools, there's a few that, are, um, that have the bulk word tagged onto them, um, essentially is the amount of content that you're running them over. The bulk tools are designed for one terabyte and above content, um, and the regular tools are one terabyte and below. The Bit Integrity Checker Tools service is uh, simply a, a smattering of a couple different tools that you could potentially run related to Bit Integrity. Um, if you wanted, for instance, just a file of all of the stored checksum values for your content in DuraCloud, uh, we have a tool for that. If you wanted to compare two reports, for instance, um, you could do that via the Bit Integrity Checker Tools service as well. So moving down to our two duplicate services. Um, the first one, Duplicate on Demand, is what I usually tongue-in-cheek call copy and paste. Um, the developers don't particularly like me typically calling it that because it simplifies the service. But what it does is it creates an exact copy of content you have stored in one storage area and then moves that copy over to a secondary area. So you have two, ha you have two exact replica copies within DuraCloud. And the use case that I typically uh, use to explain this service is if you start using DuraCloud and you add content to the Amazon storage area and decide two or three months down the line that you've created a really great collection of content and you'd like to back it up to another storage provider as, as a means of preservation so you have two copies of that content, you would run the duplicate on demand service to copy all of the content uh, in one storage area. In this example, the, uh, would, the area would be Amazon and then move the copy over to Rackspace. So you have two copies, one in Amazon and one in Rackspace. The Duplicate on Change service has a little bit different use case. Um, this is for people who know right off the bat that they'd like to have two copies, one in Amazon and one in Rackspace, for instance. And what you would do is deploy this service before you've even added content to DuraCloud. And the service will start watching the primary storage area and automatically add changes of content from the primary area to the secondary area. So you can simply transfer your content to DuraCloud and this service will automatically create two copies for you. And assuming you keep this service running, it will keep those copies synchronized. So again, this service will keep your Amazon and your Rackspace storage areas exactly synchronized. So you have two exact copies stored within DuraCloud, just within different commercial storage providers uh, if, you, if you choose. Moving down the list, the image server service, as I mentioned before, allows you to serve images uh, within DuraCloud. Um, but I think more importantly, it allows you to then embed the links for those, those images within your own application. Uh, our image server services leverages, leverages the open source Jatoka uh, image server that's available. And I will show you how to deploy the service in just a moment. Uh, moving down the list, the image transformer service, the regular and the bulk. Um, again, pretty straightforward. It allows you to transform one image file type to another uh, if you so choose. And again, the bulk is for uh, large amounts of content, one terabyte and above. And last on the list is the media streamer service. And similar to the image server, it allows you to stream uh, audio and media files within your DuraCloud instance. But again, more importantly, it allows you to embed those streams uh, within your own applications. So with both of these, the image server and media streamer, uh, you could really leverage DuraCloud as a, an image server or a media uh, streaming server if you so choose. 
as well. So to deploy any of these services, it's as simple as clicking on the service, uh, choosing next here in the bottom right part of the screen, and then the next uh, phase of this is the configuration page. And for some services, there are a couple different configuration options. Uh, for the image server, you simply say, uh, I want to run the service. And uh, to do that, you'd simply click deploy again here in the bottom right hand side of your screen. You'll see a little status indicator box in the middle of your screen with our neon green indicator bar. And as soon as the image server service has deployed, it will appear in the list of services here on the left hand column of your screen. And I'll wait a moment while my screen capture catches up. <clears throat> and I may have timed out because I haven't done anything in a while, so I'm just going to hit reload for a moment. So what happens when you talk too long in a demo? <laughs> You get logged out. So moving back to the dashboard tab and the last one I wanted to, to discuss to, with you today. <clears throat> the dashboard essentially is a nice snapshot of the content that you have stored within DuraCloud. So you can see both storage and service uh, reporting features here. First, uh, first I'll show you the storage area. Um, what this does is gives you a breakout of not only the size of content uh, you have stored within DuraCloud at the moment, but also the total number of files. And then you can drill down uh, based on space uh, to view further information. So for instance, if I was interested in the photo archive space here, you simply click on that pie piece and you can see a further breakout uh, in terms of, again, file type by size and by count as well. All of the data that's used to create these pie, pie graphs is available in the data table right here in the kind of middle right part of your screen, so if you're not interested in the pie graphs but would like the tabular data used to create them, uh, it's available there. You can also download the full report, so for all of the, the tables and uh, pie charts that you see, you can download uh, that again here in the top right hand side of your screen. And you can also uh, sort back through chronologically in time to see how your DuraCloud instance, the content within it, has changed. So moving back uh, to the beginning of August, you can see that I had about 3 gigabytes of content and almost 2,000 files, so quite a bit more content than I do today. And again, uh, the interaction is the same. You can drill down as you could before and also see the data that's comprised of these pie charts. Uh, moving over to the Services tab, um, first you're presented with a list of currently installed services, and you can see my image server service did actually deploy. Um, to view more information about the installed services, you can click on either of the names and you can see the configuration information for, uh, for that service that's currently running. And also, uh, if you click the completed icon up here, you can see a list of all of the services that you've run historically uh, while using DuraCloud. And uh, we know that list would get quite long, so here on the right hand side of your screen you have the ability to filter the results. You can um, filter via a date range if you're interested only in, in services that have run within the past week, for instance. Uh, you can also filter based on the status of uh, the service run, so maybe you're only interested in successful service runs. Or uh, at the very end, you can also filter based on the service type. So for instance, if you're only interested in how many times you've run the Bit Integrity Checker service, uh, you can sort just for those. And the last thing I wanted to point out is that again you can view all of the configuration options if you just click on uh, any of these rows here. So uh, what I wanted to point out for instance this bit integrity checker service that was run on September 16th about a week ago. I can view all of the information uh, for that service run in terms of what space it was run over, um, how many particular content items were checked, etc. So it's a great way for you to see historically uh, how you've used your DuraCloud instance, and also if you wanted to replicate any of these service runs, you can certainly do that as well. So that concludes today's live demo and also the webinar. We encourage you to visit duracloud.org for more information, or feel free to email me at csmith at duraspace.org.